In 1965, the first combat units of the U.S. Army landed in southern Vietnam. With this move, the Americans raised the bar of their war in Vietnam. U.S. soldiers directly participate in the conflict. Modern means of war and weapons of mass destruction were mobilized in an attempt to save the U.S.-backed puppet regime from ultimate collapse. U.S. troops continuously conducted search-and-destroy operations. They aim at forests, villages, and innocent civilians in southern Vietnam using weapons of destruction banned by international conventions in their massacres. More dangerously, the U.S. Army had orchestrated the largest campaign of chemical warfare in the history of mankind, both in terms of scale and nature in Vietnam. In early 1961, U.S. President Kennedy and the National Security Council gave the green light to chemical warfare in an inoffensive name, Operation Ranch Han. Over time, this war was scaled up with the direct involvement of the U.S. Army and the Saigon administration. In 1970, I served in Air Squadron 221 when U.S. advisor directed us to conduct special work. We flew to designated coordinates, tied the rope from the floor of our helicopter onto the cardboard barrels and kicked them out onto the ground. I threw out three barrels all together. Outside each barrel, there was a code and the label Danger with skull and crossbones. The chemical warfare the U.S. conducted in Vietnam lasted 10 years. The longest recorded sustained usage of chemical weapons. During this period of time, the U.S. forces spray more than 80 million liters of toxic chemicals, mainly Asian orange dioxin on southern Vietnam. These missions were aimed at clearing ground near U.S. bases and those forests along the main Vietnamese supply arteries, destroying crops and annihilating life thus forcing people to live in U.S. control zones. The U.S. Army had used the achievements of modern agrochemistry, including pesticides, herbicides and hormone-stimulating growth of plants for military purposes. They applied a dose of 20, 30 or even more times higher than permitted, which seriously impacted and damaged people's health. According to the world scientists, the concentration of dioxin in substance 245T, namely in Agent Orange, is 3 ppm. Some say it must be 13 ppm or more. Based on this data, many scientists believe the U.S. troops have scattered 366 kilograms of dioxin across Vietnam's south. Others say this figure might reach 500 or even 2,000 kilograms. Earlier, the toxic chemical dioxin was thought to be an impurity in the substance 245T, but in fact it wasn't. In 1977, four years before the U.S. Army sprayed this chemical in southern Vietnam, an American and a German scientist had succeeded in synthesizing dioxin. Perhaps dioxin had been a chemical inserted product at that time, not simply an impurity. U.S. troops spray toxic chemicals not only on designated flood lines in southern Vietnam, but also in vast areas, forests, mountains, fields and villages. 
different means were used for the spray. As a consequence, more than 3 million hectares of forests were destroyed, causing a severe imbalance in ecosystems and directly affecting the habitat of a large number of people. This is the area at the Da Nang Airport, which used to warehouse Agent Orange dioxin. Thirty years after the war, this toxin still exists with an unacceptably high residue content. The Ashaw Airport in 13 Hue was sprayed with Agent Orange at a density of 70 gallons per square kilometers during wartime. Now, nearly 40 years later, this area is still severely polluted by the dioxin residue in the ground much higher than permitted levels. Some lawyers from the United States have witnessed with their own eyes how life had been ravaged in this land. The environment in many places throughout Vietnam has been seriously affected by Asian orange dioxin. That truth has been proven, and so have the terrible consequences it left on humans. Chen Van Chum and Chen Thi Zan in Quang Chi province, a locality exposed to Asian Orange during the American War, have seven children, four of whom have cerebral palsy. Their family has lived in misery for scores of years. On the 25th of August, 1969, President Ho Chi Minh sent a letter to U.S. President Richard Nixon accusing the U.S. forces of using toxic chemicals during their war in Vietnam. The U.S. claimed they employed the herbicide for ground clearance. At the Oxay Conference held in Paris in 1970, Vietnamese professor Ton Thất Tung told the world scientists that cancers, miscarriages, birth defects, and degenerates found in many Vietnamese families were caused by Asian orange dioxin. The U.S. considered his presentation strictly propaganda. Twenty-six years later, in July of 1996, U.S. President Bill Clinton announced that additional illnesses had been determined by the National Academy of Sciences linked to the use of Agent Orange and that compensations would therefore be paid to the affected veterans and their children. Preliminary statistics show that of the 3 million U.S. soldiers and officers warring in Vietnam, more than 200,000 have been affected by unusual diseases consistent with toxic chemicals such as dioxin. Our family is now living in misery. We want those who had caused this disaster to be held responsible. Vietnam has millions of people affected by Asian Orange, and no one can count how many more will become its victims, as it's still wreaking havoc on the next generations. I demand the U.S. chemical group be held accountable for these victims and their families, both the living and the dead. Vietnam has now collected 7 million signatures, demanding justice be done for Asian Orange dioxin victims, which is a righteous petition not only for the victims themselves, but also for the whole community of Vietnamese nationals.